take it away. Okay, great. Yeah, well, again, uh, thank you all for making time for us. And uh, Gil, Carrie, thanks, of course, for uh, uh, hosting this and bringing us all together. Uh, for anyone on the call not familiar um, with our office, my name is Larry Reed. I'm CEO of uh, ZK Teco USA. I've um, been here 15 years. Esteban is our lead engineer and product manager for the Speedface line. So the main purpose, of course, is to uh, give everyone an opportunity to see a live a demo of the uh, reader and its capabilities. We'll open this up to Q&A. But uh, if you'd allow me just five minutes, I know you guys have been working with us for a long time now, but it's real important um, because there's so much information out there on uh, thermal cameras that it's important to have some uh, appreciation for what's behind the product when you start to look at differentiating, especially with end users. Uh, you know, especially with all this uh, China-made product coming out, um, a lot of the times everything looks like a commodity. And uh, certainly if it's just a commodity, then there's a good point. Why do I need to have this price any higher than another commodity? So that's why I'd like to just bring to your attention, especially surveillance camera experts for all these years, that it's real important to understand the company behind the technology to ensure that there's longevity behind it. Because right now, this whole advent of COVID-19, it's very new for everyone. And that's why everybody is jumping into this market, including ZK Teco. You've got all your surveillance camera companies that, um, you know, at first they added access control because they wanted to expand their offering. And they offered, you know, non-integrated access control. And we know this because many of them asked ZK Teco to be their OEM access control provider. But we decided years ago we were not going to do that. So they came out with their own access control. And now those surveillance camera companies come out now with body temperature because simple enough, just add a thermal sensor to a surveillance camera. So that's their approach. Of course, there are going to be more access control companies entering the market. I don't see any yet. And of course, you see a lot of digital thermometers coming onto the market, making all these claims. So end users, understandably, are very confused by all of this. It uh, understandably introduces skepticism and doubt because how could so many vendors be making the same claim? And then sometimes they think this is all made by one company and that the rest of us are just private labeling it. So if you'll allow me just five minutes just to briefly go through a little bit of background and then we'll jump into the presentation. Please understand that COVID-19, we hope it does not last that much longer. So point being is what happens in the months to come after there's a vaccine? Where do all these vendors go? Do they still stay involved with this? Um, uh, body temperature, um, you know, uh, uh, market, or do they back off because there's no longer business in it? So, of course, you want to make sure you're working with a, with a vendor that's in there, in here for the long run. So, it's not just about a digital thermometer. Let's look at the technology behind it so your customer's investment is protected, even if one day there's no longer need to have body temperature checking. So that's why it's important to appreciate the Speedface series of readers. We were shipping these last year. It already won several awards. And that's because in addition to body temperature mass detection, we're also the first outdoor rated face recognition access control company combining both infrared and visible light. IP68 rated, IK04 rated. So we had all this technology already. And the reason being is we're a 20 year old access control company. This is what we do. If a vaccine comes out tomorrow, it doesn't change our business model. This is what we do for a living. So I just want to touch upon a little bit of the technology beyond just body temperature detection. Just a reminder, of course, I know your focus is surveillance cameras, but as mentioned before, we have a very comprehensive line. We have traditional RFID door access kits. We've got biometric door access kits. We have HID form, uh, card format readers. What's unique is we also manufacture all our own biometrics. We've been doing fingerprint for over 20 years. We've been doing face recognition over 10 years. And now we're doing palm recognition, and of course we're doing multi-biometrics. So this is nothing new to us, blah, blah, blah. You're already aware of this. We also have UHF readers, turnstiles, walk-through metal detectors, and even x-ray scanners. We're now one of 32 global offices, over 4,000 employees, uh, multiple manufacturing facilities. You might not be aware of this, but we manufacture in Thailand, and we also manufacture in India. In fact, we have um, Atlas panels manufactured in Thailand in our office, absolutely global. And our R&D in the U.S. is in Silicon Valley. 
And um, in addition to that, you may not be aware, but uh, our team, of course, has grown considerably. This is a picture of our team here in Atlanta. There are about 20 of us, as well as having over 30 reps in the field. We moved to Atlanta because we also needed to uh, have a, a, a much more space for manufacturing and assembly, and we even have a user experience center. I'll just show you quick photos. This is an overview of our office right now. The experience center, I know you guys sell all over the country. So please, if you have any customers near Atlanta, have them come visit with us. We have this 5,000 square foot user experience center where you see all this technology coming together. So why is my temperature in the news? And we don't have to sell anybody, but the introduction of COVID-19, of course, everyone's scared uh, what to do next. And while there's no vaccine for COVID-19, the next best solution, of course, is body temperature detection. Now, this is new in the U.S., but if anyone has traveled abroad, especially in Asian countries where we've had 10 years of SARS and bird flu virus and all of that, uh, they actually have security guards walking throughout the airport with handheld thermometers scanning for people with elevated body temperature. So again, this is only new in the, in the U.S. because of the awareness, but using body temperature detection has been a tool used for many, many years. So prior to this, of course, you guys were focused on cameras. You know, even access control often takes a backseat to your surveillance cameras. Or, of course, your fire suppression systems. Um, all these things take priority. Customers are allocating money towards it. This is what we focus on, right? This is how life was before COVID-19. But now with the introduction of COVID-19, who cares about security if your business is not up and open, right? So right now in the news every day, daily White House briefings, all the security stuff, it doesn't matter because all people want to talk about, all customers want to talk about is, how am I going to reopen my business? How am I going to get financing? How do I get my employees to come back? How do I get my customers to come back, right? So you don't need security at this point. You need confidence. Confidence uh, the government has confidence to, to pull back its restrictions, confidence so that the employees come back with some reasonable assurance they're not going to contract COVID from somebody, and of course, your customers. So confidence now is, is based on having body temperature systems deployed. So uh, a lot of times people think, well, body temperature, let me turn to my surveillance vendor. Right? And you guys have, again, been spelling surveillance forever. But you also know on the phone, surveillance is usually after the fact. And a, a, a burglar alarm goes off. Hopefully, you've got video recording of the intruder. You've got some evidence you've collected. And now, hopefully, you've got something to show the police so that they can go out, go out find the bad guy, and hopefully reclaim whatever they, they stole from, your, from uh, the premise. So you guys probably know more about this than I do, but this presentation is for end users. We, show, we try to paint for them, what does a surveillance solution look like using body temperature detection? You got your thermal camera, which is normally at least 10 to 20 feet away from your target audience. So typically you also have to purchase a black body so you can calibrate room temperature and contrast that with the people that you're, you're scanning. Then of course, you gotta be running face detection so that you can distinguish between a hot cup of coffee and a, a face. Uh, of course, you need to have body temperature detection software running. So you, know, you have that streaming through a network recorder where you're recording. And eventually, of course, that ends up in a monitoring station where we presume you've got security guards um, you know, looking at that film to see who has elevated body temperatures so that they can then presumably take action. But our point being here is this is really after the fact. With body temperature detection, you want to prevent people having an elevated body temperature before they enter the premise before they risk exposing customers and coworkers, before they risk exposing the security guard. Right? So that's why we say surveillance has a great role, and if all you need to do is scan a tremendous amount of people, record who's got elevated body temperature for, for contact tracing and that kind of thing, yeah, we, we totally get that. In fact, we even have our own solution. We're not talking about today, but we have a surveillance camera that's got a thermal sensor, and we can do the same thing. We can scan um, you know, dozens of people at the same time and record that, run it through an NVR, collect that, do analysis. We, we got that. But if the whole idea here is to reopen your business because you're scared that someone's going to contract an infectious disease, you need to think access control not surveillance. So that's why in this image, we have a person right by a turnstile that's got two of our speed face readers. And once those readers detect that you have an elevated body temperature, you can either maybe just trigger a light, trigger an alarm, you could lock down the turnstile, because we are an access control company. 
Our devices have relays. Our devices have auxiliary inputs and outputs. Our devices have weak and input output. We do access control. So I just wanted to preface this online demo with just a reminder of the company behind the product. You know ZK is not going anywhere. You know Carrie and Gil are never going to stop bothering you guys for years to come. So we are in this business, you know, for, for forever. And, uh, and the product is not new. Access control, we were already winning awards last year, and we've added a thermal sensor. So, yes, the body temperature thermal sensor is new, but certainly the technology behind it is not. So I'm just going to skip ahead now to the live demo. I, I hope you, you found some of that helpful, mostly to make sure your end users understand. I know you guys get it, but, of course, you know, your dealers and your end users may not necessarily understand uh, the big picture. So I'll hand that off to Esteban. Thank you, Larry. Let me see how I can change my share here. <laughs> We're switching over to screen so that Esteban's web camera can focus on our speed face unit. Can you switch like presenters, or is it staying on the CD? No, it's on the same one. Okay. I just got to make sure I can get my camera here. I'm not sure if that's able to be seen. Are you able to see the uh, video of the the reader here? It's uh, it's dark for me right now. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it's not showing that. So let me see what's going on here. Uh, I'll just do a share the whole screen. Let me see. So if you're not aware, we've been doing this numerous times each week where we have these live webinars and the demo. And I encourage you, um, other coworkers, dealers and users, uh, of course, you know, we remain completely um, distributor agnostic on the line. It's all about education. So please do encourage uh, your customers to come watch the video. And um, the video, um, I'm sorry, the webinar, the webinar really does most of the selling. Okay, so are you able to see it now? Yeah, it looks clear now. Okay, great. So as we talked about, here is the SF1008 Plus. So this is our temperature screening, mass detection, as well as facial recognition, palm verification, uh, pin or password. Uh, verification also card via weakened input. Uh, so this on its own is his own access control device. Uh, so like Larry had mentioned, the predecessor to this was an outdoor reader. So that was uh, IP68 and IK04. But when we added the temperature module to it, uh, it negated all that. So this is now an indoor reader. And this is this has all the trappings of a regular access control device. So it has your weakened input, your weakened output, uh, your normal open, normal close lock outputs, uh, your alarm output, as well as Rex input and auxiliary input, and your RJ45 to connect it back to our software. So right now I have this set for any type of verification plus body temperature, which I've set my threshold to 100.4 degrees. So now I'll just simply just come up, and I'll verify at the reader. Just like that, as you can see, it was able to verify my face, it measured my temperature, it was below the threshold, so therefore it granted me access, and it also opened our, our lock output, which I've wired to a green LED to it. And I'll do the same thing using my palm. Successfully verified, please measure your temperature. Please adjust your position for normal temperature. So just like that, it verified my palm, asked for my temperature, and based on those factors being below the threshold, they granted me access and once again opened our lock output. Uh, so, so the pump comes in very handy for people who are a little wary about using facial recognition. Uh, you do still need to uh, present your, uh, your face in order to have the temperature detected, but your verification mode would be the palm and you would not need to enroll a face. So now I'll just demonstrate what would happen if someone would come in with a temperature above the threshold. So I'm going to set it back down to 95 degrees. I'll present my face. And as you can see, even though it verified my face, it denied me access because my temperature was above that threshold. 
And what I did there is I also wired our alarm output to a red LED. That way, if people are interested in using it with access control and they just want to see if someone's coming into their building with a high temperature or what they consider to be a high temperature, you're able to get a visual uh, verification of that. Same with the, uh, the green LED. So now just for quick reference, uh, I can show you at any point you can turn on or off the temperature screening as well as the mass detection. And when you do that, it functions just like our pre its predecessor. So it just does its quick uh, face matching. Just like that, it's able to identify my face. And just like that, it can identify my palm as well. And with that, it can identify my face up to eight to 10 feet away. But once we turn the temperature screening on, you do need to be at least uh, 18 inches away from the reader. So now we'll go over a couple more settings that we have available in this menu and that this reader can do. So here we can, as you saw, you can manually set your high temperature alarm threshold. Uh, at any point, you can decide whether to deny access uh, based on the temperature being above, or if their temperature is above and you still want to allow access and get a report, you still can. We have our temperature units. So if you have any international customers, it can be switched to Celsius. We have our temperature measurement distance. Like I mentioned, it's currently set for far, and that's 18 inches away. And that's the optimal, uh, optimal distance you really want to be away from this. So that way you don't have a user getting too close to the reader in case they sneeze or cough or, or breathe too heavily on it. Uh, you try and keep this reader as clean as possible and, and as contactless as possible. We also have a built-in temperature deviation correction. So this is for your points throughout the day when it may, uh, when, temp when temperature may be affected by say outdoors. So if someone is coming in from the mor in the morning and it's cooler outside, so their body temperature is a little lower, you can have it set here to add a few degrees to that to compensate for it. And same thing in the afternoon, if someone's coming in from being outside in the sun, their, temp their body temperature is a little warmer, you can have it subtract some, a couple degrees for that too. Another feature we have built in now uh, that's become quite popular is the mask detection. As you guys know, uh, pretty much you can't go anywhere now without wearing a mask. I know you can't walk into a grocery store without one. And especially for, and this was already the case, especially for places like restaurants, uh, food processing plants, anywhere that uh, where people are coming in contact with consumer products and they have to wear a mask. So we've added this function in. Now I'm just gonna whoop, whoop, simply throw on my mask and show you how it works. I'll throw my mask on, I'll present myself to the reader. As you can see, it detects I'm wearing the mask. It verifies my face, and since my temperature is below that threshold, it grants me access. So now I'll do the same thing, but without the mask. Please adjust your so even though my temperature is below that threshold, it verifies my face, but I wasn't wearing my mask. So therefore, I wasn't following protocol, so it denied me access. Another question we get a lot is that, do I have to be enrolled on the reader? Do I need to be registered in the software in order for my temperature still be taken and it behave the same way? And that answer is no. Uh, being able to click here for unregistered people to access, we allow for anyone to, coming into the building, visitors, customers, anyone off the street, to still be able to walk in, have their temperature scanned, and then have it perform the same functions. So an unregistered user, visitor can walk up, with a normal temperature, they can be granted access, and with a high temperature, they would be denied access. We also have the capability of being able to, cap, to do a face capture of that person at that moment in time. That way, if you need to have any type of audit trails or contact tracing of where a person was at the point that they, uh, that they measured high or that they registered at the, at the reader, we're able to do that. And when we do that, we do include a privacy agreement. This is just letting the, the end user and the customer know that ZK Techo does not collect any data, therefore we do not share any data, we don't data mine, we don't have any type of cloud access that we, that we can tap into to get databases or anything like that. All these devices are software, everything lives on your network and your servers, and we have absolutely zero access to it or any of the data on it. Unless, of course, there is some type of troubleshooting done by the integrator or dealer, and we need to remote in via team viewer session, but that's the only time we would have access to any data, and that would be with the customer's consent. 
So now I'll switch over here to our biosecurity software. So this is our biosecurity software. It's our enterprise, uh, enterprise level access control software, which all of our devices connect to. So all our panels, uh, all our elevator control panels, our kiosks, if anyone has uh, on this compliant or any other type of camera, IP cameras, they can connect and monitor through here as well. And with the release of these readers, we've added a temperature management module. So with this temperature management module, uh, whether you have the captures enabled or not, you're able to see a real-time monitoring of what's going on. So obviously, if you have the captures enabled, you'll be able to see that person's face at that point in time. And you'll also be able to see any abnormal temperatures, any mask, anyone not wearing a mask when they should, will all show here in real-time monitoring. So if you have a guard uh, that's watching the screen, you can have them act on that. And also, we do keep an, an audit trail of all our raw records. And these are all exportable and able to be saved onto the PC or anywhere they need to, the, the company needs to have it. So you'll be able to get all your raw records here, along with any type of pictures that were taken at that point, if that's enabled. You can also get uh, just the records of just the personnel. So you can see here, these are all my check-ins from the 19th alone. So if you need to just see all the check-ins for someone on a certain day, you're able to do that. And you can go as far back as you need to. Or if you just want to see any high temperatures, you're able to keep that here too as well. And you can even check by department. So another great feature we've built into this is the ability to do all the same configuration you just saw me do on the reader to be able to do it from the software itself. So here under the device tab, and if I go into select the device and go to set mask and temperature detection parameters, I'm able to do all those same configurations right from here. So I can enable my temperature screening, choose to deny access based on that, change my threshold, do my deviation correction. Uh, all of everything you just saw me do on the reader, you can do from here. And this saves a lot of time. That way, if you have several of these deployed throughout a building or a campus or anything like that, you don't have to have one dedicated person to be running back and forth all day to do any changes. And for these, they can be customizable for each reader on its own. So you don't have to do all readers at the same time. Uh, you can do each one with its own custom settings. We also have the ability to send out email alerts based on a high temperature or someone not wearing a mask. So all you have to do is just create your linkage here, and you're able to get an email notification to whichever email you have set up to be able to get uh, the time, place, uh, temperature, whether they were wearing a mask or not. You're able to get that alert in real time on your phone. So another important thing I always like to throw out there is that when it comes to uh, temperature screening, we are not a medical device. We're not, we're not claiming to have any medical benefits. Uh, we don't provide the cure for COVID. We don't stop the spread of infectious diseases. All we simply do is just report that person's body temperature at that moment in time that they're presented at the reader. So just because someone comes in, it may be that there's a high temperature, doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they're sick, you have to call the emergency, uh, you don't have to take them to the emergency room, you don't have to, you know, uh, call for an ambulance or anything like that. All we're suggesting is that, hey, according to the settings you set on this reader, this person's temperature is above that threshold. So after that, it's really up to that business to have something, some type of protocols in place for that. Uh, we kind of liken it to a metal detector. So if someone walks through the metal detector, it beeps, doesn't necessarily mean that person is carrying a knife or a gun or that they're a threat. Usually they would just, you know, step over and then they would be wanted by a security guard. And then based on their findings there, they would either be given access or denied access. Same thing with this. It's kind of like a first line of defense. Someone comes in with a high temperature. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have a nurse on site. There's going to be someone standing there with another thermometer. If you want to give them a couple minutes to cool, to cool off or warm up based on the outside temperature, uh, that's all completely up to the business. A lot of businesses are going to have to have these in place now, and there's no one blanket uh, procedure that everyone is following. So everyone's kind of have to get their HR involved, their department heads as to how they want to tackle it. So that's another thing that's just something really important that we want to stress, uh, that we're not a medical device, no medical benefits, just taking that person's temperature at that point in time. Yeah. 
So that's about it. Uh, just uh, again, want to give you a little bit of background, a reminder of the company behind the product, the evolution of the product. We want to be mindful of your time, which is why we really did focus on the product demonstration. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up to questions. Just to a um, little FYI to everybody who's in the uh, chat right now, you're all automatically muted. So if anybody would like to ask a question, you're going to have to unmute yourselves first. Thank you. Yeah, Larry, uh, a quick question is the, um, the log reports showing, showing who came and went and their temperatures and things of that nature. Are they exportable? Yes, they they can all be exported via CSV or Excel file. Yeah, th this is no different than any other access control uh, product that we've uh, released in the last five or six years. These are all storing and matching templates. They're storing transactions. In addition to the transaction file now, of course, is the body temperature uh, reading. And then that data lives and breathes on that device. And then it's up to the end user whether or not they wish to uh, use our ZK biosecurity software for centralized management and the database uh, uh, housing. Thank you. Likewise, because you're using the ZK biosecurity software, um, the same feature, we've always had video linkage. So if you wish, if you have OnVIV compliant cameras, you can have the cameras pointed at a door. And then whenever there's an elevated body temperature, you could have linkage so that you could even have that video file embedded in the access control log. So you can absolutely use this in combination with surveillance cameras. Hey guys, uh, I think you said that you had to be within 18 inches uh, for the reader to detect. Is that both palm and face? Sorry, can you repeat that? It was a little, it was cutting out a little bit. I believe you said 18 inches was the distance for re the reader to operate. It's 18 inches for the temperature to be scanned. That's the farthest you can be from getting an accurate temperature. Gotcha. But the, the palm reader could still be farther away than that. Uh, the palm, uh, for just the palm, you want to keep it around that distance as well, because it's not going to be able to pick it up from far away. But the face, it can pick up without the temperature on from about 8 to 10 feet. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, in fact, this is Carrie. It looks like uh, we've we're pretty much finished unless anybody has any additional questions. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, unless someone wants to get something in right now. So you guys can reach out to ISM West and we will be happy to any one of our members of our team to help you with any applications you would have. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you so much, Esteban and Larry, and to everybody who tuned this webinar. Um, we appreciate it. CCTV.net says thank you to you all. Thank you for the good presentation. Have a nice day. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank um, you again, everyone. Sure, yeah, thank you. We'll make sure to get a copy of this out to everybody who's interested. And um, you should all see that in your inbox by tomorrow morning. All right. Well, thank you, Jack. And we'll talk afterwards. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.